This is Talk of Asian Marketing with a special emphasis on localized Chinese consumer behavior. Hey James. Hey Clive. Here we are, Talk of Asian Marketing, and we are off to a restaurant again. Well, yeah. Well, we must be hungry folks. And, uh, <laughs> in fact, this restaurant is in Shanghai. So that's great. We're here in uh, Wamping Steak. So that's uh, really quite a high-end restaurant. We're talking uh, here in Taiwan about thirteen hundred dollars a head. And, about what, uh, forty dollars. So that's forty U.S. dollars. Yeah, about forty U.S. dollars. So for most people, this is maybe a two times a year kind of visit. So it's that kind of fairly high-end kind of setting. And we're going to walk through the experience that we had. We had this experience in Shanghai. This is kind of fairly typical for the experience that. And you this is just get one of the branches kind of in Shanghai. Of course, they're all over mm. Taiwan, very well known. Mm. And our last show, we kind of talked about how the company developed mm. and how they grew and how steak was the kind of an unusual meal. Mm. And now it's been kind of educate the consumer. And Wamping steps in with a little bit of localization and a little bit of foreign know-how and develops what's really turned into a successful chain. It has, and um, I think the very nice thing is the way the service flows, because it flows right from the first point of contact to that point at which you leave. So what we want to do in this show is really try and walk you through some of that experience, highlight some of the interesting things that happen, some of the experience that we get, and of course highlight, as we usually do, mm-hmm. some of the localization that goes on right. in that process. Right. So. Of course, the first thing we made it, we had to make a reservation. I was going to say, <laughs> where do we start? And my watch is unusual. Up. I mean, in, in, in Chinese is, restaurants, mm-hmm. making a reservation is unusual, unless you're in like a hotel restaurant, those kinds of things. Mm-hmm. And you know, overseas they get a lot of, you know, four star. They read about the best restaurants, and they tend to be these hotel things. And a lot of people complain because these are not really local mm-hmm. places. Mm-hmm. But Wamping's, you know, this is a little bit unusual. It's a local place, and you've still got to make sure you call ahead and make a reservation. For sure, and some of them, I have to say, in Taiwan, they do get so busy. And um, people do sometimes show up and want to get in, and it's too busy to get in. And uh, they did tell me a nice story of a lady who pitched up. She was extremely frustrated because she said, I try to call, and your number's engaged. I have to say the manager thought this was a little bit of an interesting story. But the lady was so passionate about coming and having a meal right now mm. that they fixed up a table for her, they got her in, they found a nice little corner where she could be comfortable, and she got her steak. Mm. So this is the kind of experience that they do try to create for their well, customers. One thing's got that service emphasis, right? Mm. And I think we saw that when we went to the restaurant in Shanghai from the very beginning. So we made our reservation. So my wife called up, she made the reservation, said it was a little bit interesting because, of course, there was that strong Chinese accent. But that was the first uh, point of contact, and she left and she said, well, that was pretty good, you know, we, we know what time we need to be there, we've set it up for the right number of people, and we show up, and immediately it was straight in, they knew who we were. And as you see in the, the video, we walk into the lobby and they greet us, and it's a very nice sort of warm feeling as you walk in. Interesting decor too. Do you remember the decor? Yeah, I know it was dark. <laughs> <laughs> the environment was dark. Do you remember there was quite a lot of the sort of glitzy? There was uh, as we walked into the uh, uh, restaurant. There was like a chandelier. That was it. Yeah. Yes, there was a lot of the glass, the chandelier, very glitzy kind of feeling, which reflects a little bit more of what you see in the mainland China situation that we see over in Taiwan. Yeah, a little bit more toned down in Taiwan. Yes, yeah, so they sort of pulled back from that slightly over-the-top, very glitzy feeling. Then we're taken right round to the table, which, uh, again, very smooth. People come, they've got the nice uniforms on, well-pressed, well-presented, took us nicely around, got us seated, pulling out the chairs. I'm not sure they got the order quite right. A little bit of confusion at the beginning there. Yeah. I think, um, James, you purposely said you wanted to use English to test it out, to give the guy a little bit of pressure. And he did get confused. I think he went off and tried to get someone to back him up or help him or something. That's right. I think they, he was fairly smooth, but I noticed that the man who brought us in, the waiter that brought us in, he did a nice job. He sort of got us seated, gave us the water, which is always nice, brought the menus. 
but then he disappeared and a much younger yeah. waiter appeared. Sent somebody else to cover for him. Yes, yes. So I think there was a bit of, we deliberately, because we were setting out to test the service situation, we deliberately uh, set out to use English despite sort of 60% of us around the table being able to use some amount of Chinese. Yeah. So that was interesting when we started to order a little bit of a glitch, but we worked through it and he was very determined to get the order right, to check that he had got the right things in the right order noted down. So that was, that was kind of impressive that yeah. there was that tenac tenacity to get what we wanted right. So good feeling. I think the menu is an interesting thing to look at. You know, the last year we were talking about how we had this development from the steakhouses and the night markets and things like Ponderosa. And lots of those, you know, you get a really basic menu. You know, here's your menu. Choose A, B, C, or D. Yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. But when you walk into uh, one thing, you sit down, they give you uh, really lo what looks like a high-end restaurant menu, the kind of leather cover, you open it up. But then there is a little bit of the catch. It's still kind of a fixed menu system. You don't really get that much option. But you have one, two, three, four, and they go all the way through, right? So here's your two big choices here. Here's your four big choices here. Here's your two big choices here. So in a way, they create an illusion of you're at a high-end restaurant. But it's still very much like the restaurants we're used to in Taiwan, where, okay, I want that one, this one, this one, this one. That's it. it has that feeling of the localized, as you're right. saying, I think, in the way people tend to order. And of course, the other thing that's a little bit unusual in the order process is that the staff come and you order everything from your starter right through to coffee at the end, which, particularly in a high-end right. setting, is a little right. bit unusual. It's all done. It's all done up but front. One front, up front contact, full order all the way through. So, interesting, I think, from that point of view, but also, as you're saying, Clyde, I think the point on the range of options is just the competitive situation, really. As you're saying, if you go for a, a la carte in a Western situation, you expect an awful lot of options. options. Yeah. And then even the option to tailor within that right. uh, option, you know, you don't want the egg or you don't want some part incorporated in the cooking process, you expect that option to remove it. Whereas, of course, what we're seeing here in this situation, which again is very Chinese, is not that expectation that it's me, it's I, I want to customize to the nth degree. You know, a limited number of options still sends the message of special you, it, and different. It helps to guide the consumer who probably doesn't know a lot about mm. this kind of situation because it's so different. It's In <coughs> a way, it's very Western, and that's part of its attraction. It's a different kind of approach that people say, hey, let me go there. But if you really gave them the full head-on Western experience, they'd be at a loss. Yeah. So it's still you know, following that Chinese approach. Your options are limited, which, of course, is part of the system to make efficiency better. And you, you know, you choose it all the way from the beginning to the end. Your ability to change things is not not that large. But then again, if who wants to? Yes, right? exactly. They want to make it easy this way, and they really do. So the locals just, you know, click right in on it, and they they get to participate on that steak culture, that westernized kind of restaurant culture, but it's delivered in a very kind of Chinese fashion. Absolutely. And so the meal started to come out, and what we'd ordered came out beautifully, and I think it was really very comfortable in the way that the service staff knew what to do, they knew who to give, what dish to, so yeah. clearly reflected a system that they've got in place that was efficient, and of course, I mean, that's one big irritation, isn't it, if you go into a restaurant, you order something, and then they bring the wrong thing, I mean, that's... Yeah. No, there was no, there was no, no mix up, no screw up, up on that, all, no, that no, regard. very efficient. And I, I don't know if you remember the dishes and the, the light, the platters they brought out, Quite eye-catching, quite different. Yeah, they really did them up well, and I think that's partly because they do have a limited number of mm -hmm. options, and so they really concentrate on that presentation. Mm -hmm. And it's very consistent, too, because I've been back a couple other times. It always follows that same presentation, very consistent. Very consistent, very eye-catching. It is very Draw, nice. Draws you in, like the rest of the service scape that we see in the video as we as we watch it, you can see that backdrop of other customers. It's got that eating. dark, you know. I think the uh, we're in a booth area, mm -hmm. and the booths have very high uh, backs. Mm -hmm. Also, the tables, if, they, if they're isolated tables, they tend to be off alone. 
there are a lot of individual rooms that you can have families or business. The restaurant was sort of the service escape was designed, wasn't it, so that, as you say, you, the chairs had high backs to create a slightly more private area. There were small booths. There was the shape of the restaurant lent itself to group, slight separation, right, right, slight right. degree of privacy. Right. And um, I think separate from where we were, there were the very typical private rooms, private which rooms. you tend to see a lot in the So even if you're not in the private rooms, setting. you do have that feeling that you're alone, you have some privacy. And I think that's part of the emphasis. It's very dark, mm -hmm. quiet, right? And so I think that kind of all emphasize that kind of higher end feeling that they're trying to project. Mm -hmm. Then if you walk through the restaurant, it, it kind of had a U shape. But one thing I thought was interesting is as you walk through towards the uh, restroom, mm -hmm. you actually run into the kitchen. Mm. And the kitchen is just totally exposed. Mm. And that's not something you would see in a, a you know, quote-unquote high-end restaurant in the West. Yeah. For sure, you could see right into the kitchen. They hadn't blocked it off. And my guess is that was kind of part of the design because what you see inside there is also impressive and it conveys that feeling of something that's carefully prepared. It looks very clean. It's tiled. It's organized. You know, it conveys lots of the same messages as you're getting in the whole restaurant setting. So well, I think it's a kind of a reflection of what we talked about in the last show of normal Taiwan steakhouses mm -hmm. where the cooking is right there. Yeah. So they retain that mm -hmm. because people who go to the steakhouse, they're used to seeing where is the steak cooked. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you can, see, you can really see them cooking it right there. It's the same mm -hmm. as any other steakhouse. Mm -hmm. So they retain that local metaphor. But then, on the other parts, they import a different metaphor. Yeah. And um, very powerful, very uh, positive experience, as you say. And in fact, when I was looking for the restroom, I, uh, maybe you went second, I think I gave you the tip. But I wondered where it was. Nice little bit of service contact, very polite, very courteous, explained to me where to find the, uh, the restroom. So again, these yeah, you service can't walk contacts... very far without being asked, what do you want? Exactly. There's always somebody... Always someone... Right, right in this and saying, you, can they help you? Yeah. How can I help? What What do you need? So that emphasis on the service was very, very strong, very impressive. How about the meal? Well, I enjoyed the meal very much, mm -hmm. and of course, what we see here are the multiple courses, and that was uh, you. You have your salad. There's yeah. a soup. There's the appetizer. So you part way through, you get a quite a nice uh, sort of vinegar with a fruit in it, sort of clean your palate. And I have to say, there's so many courses, by the time the steak came, I was yeah. really full. <laughs> well, a lot of people talk about this on the internet. A lot of people blog about it and say, by the time the steak comes, they're already full. Mm -hmm. And I have to say that um, at all the branches I've tried, I was full before the main course came. I think that's part of it, though. That's part of that bringing in that exotic, the multiple courses. Of course, in a Chinese meal, you have multiple courses, too, but they tend to be all served at a very similar time. Mm -hmm. And they tend to overlap. As overlap well, each other. Dishes are coming it's off. Not so and clear. The ones are coming. Right. Mm -hmm. And so it's a very different approach. And here they, you know, it's very clear. This one's done. This one's done. So that is seen as kind of a Western kind of concept, mm -hmm. and that's part of its exotic. Um, personally, I, I didn't, you know, I didn't really like the food that much. Mm -hmm. But then again, I'm not a big steak eater. Sure. Um, I don't eat steak that much. But um, it, was, uh, it was okay. And I'm not the only person to say this. On the web, a lot of people do mention that, uh, especially Wamping, is, is high price for what you get. That's interesting. Yeah. Food-wise. Yes. But they always mention how great the environment and the service is. Yeah. So I think this is, a, you know, it'd be interesting to really look behind the scenes and see how much of the cost is being, you know, accrued from the actual states they're buying and something like this. Maybe there's a little bit of um, hedging on that in order to save, you know. Save, I think for save sure money. the interesting thing was the steak I had here in Taiwan mm -hmm. and the steak that was in Shanghai. Definitely, the you think there's quality, a difference? I, I think the quality here was, 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 yeah. was, was better. Whereas yeah. I have to say in Shanghai, yeah, the the quality of the the meat didn't wasn't quite as good. Yeah, it would be this maybe a supply channel problem. Yes, I know that the Chinese situation does make it. Uh, you know, the supply channels makes it, did you say, challenging, <laughs> difficult, and, um, you know, to, to set up something that's high-end in this situation yeah. is yeah. very challenging. I mean, one of the things that people often talk about is creating this kind of service experience that we're talking about here, sensitivity to the customer, right. realizing people want water, that they should come over, 
courtesy, thinking about how you serve so you don't reach no, over a customer. You know, all these viewers are going to think this is so normal. That's right. That you shouldn't even think about it. But that's, um, you know, the thing is, if you go to a you know really popular Chinese restaurant in Hong Kong, it, none of these things apply. Indeed. None Absolutely. of these things apply. D- that doesn't make them not successful. They're still very successful. It's a completely different emphasis. You finish the meal and uh, you got to that point where you give the feedback and I think you've got a, yep. the form to share with if us. They put the form on your table and they highly encourage you to fill it out. In fact, there's some coupon here. You can win something with a credit card or something. But anyway, it begins at the top. You can check it out online. Uh, Hi, my friend. And then it's got a whole Chinese list here of questions. Interesting, the first five questions really center on how do you know about the restaurant. Mm-hmm. Um, is this the first time you've been here? How many times have you been here before? Why did you come to this restaurant? And so it's really getting the idea of how the customers mm-hmm. arrived here. And then question six has a whole series of sub-questions about uh, the service and the courses that you ate in the meal, and you are Fei Tang Mani, or it was Hen Ta. And so you'd have to check them off and then turn it back in. It's really quite detailed there on the food part. Yeah, exactly. They're really specific about the food. And then they come with the demographics, your age and your contact information, and you leave that behind. And they really encourage you to fill it out. And, um, you know, it's not like pushy, but we say, you know, well, what should we write on here? And they'll kind of encourage you. Definitely fill it out, but we don't tell you what to say. We just need your feedback. So it was really kind of a sincere way to get your feedback. That's different than restaurants that just have the paper sitting there and don't do and anything. Just have with a few it. small questions, and they pretty pretty successful. We get about sixty to seventy percent returns off this from their customers, and both here, I think that's the example we've got from the Wong Steak situation, and when we were in the Tasty uh, restaurant, they also. Uh, get you to fill it out, they encourage you to fill it out, it's very clearly put on the table at the end of the meal, and all around us I watch people fill it up, so clearly customers are fairly interested to oh, fill it up. Oh, my kids grab it and want to fill it all out. Yeah, that's great. And again, it's all part of the way that they get serious and dedicated towards getting customer feedback and taking, uh, taking action on it. Great. Well, that wrapped up our meal? Yeah, that wraps up the meal very nicely. So, good news, and we're looking forward to next week where we carry on next with week we're going to go eat some more steak that's right so I'm still feeling hungry I'm looking forward to that <laughs> okay. one we're going to say where we're going next week we're on the Tabanu aren't we what's this one this we're, we're just in one thing oh yes that's right yes that's <laughs> it. so next week we're going to Tabanu right yes we're going which to Tabanu next week so which that's is good. another uh, market segment that one thing has cut out and carved out and this one is a little bit on the high end, but a little bit different demographic. A younger demographic, not so professional maybe. Younger people could go out on a date. And a Japanese kind of uh, metaphor. It's, yes, got the Japanese flavor right, to it. So, so that's stay tuned for that. Stay tuned for the next part of our visit to the Wangping experience. Okay, great. This is Talk of Asian Marketing with a special emphasis on localized Chinese consumer behavior. Thank you.